Good evening, and welcome to this Sky at Night special. We have really exciting news. Halley's Comet has been sighted for the first time in over 70 years. Of course, it's very faint, below magnitude 24, but that's hardly surprising because at the moment it's over a thousand million miles away. The discovery was made at Palomar, where there is the 200-inch reflector. And for a long time, that was the largest telescope in the world, and is still the second largest. It has a tremendous light grasp, particularly when it's used together with a special electronic device known as a CCD, or charge couple device, which is far more sensitive than any photographic plate. Indeed, up to a few years ago, Halley's Comet couldn't have been seen at this distance with the 200-inch or anything else. I can now show exactly where it is. The right ascension is 7 hours, 10 minutes, and the declination is north, 9 degrees, 20 minutes. And um, if you look at the star map, you'll find that that's in the constellation of Canis Minor, the little dog, uh, quite close to the third magnitude star, Beta Canis Minoris. But of course, at the moment, it is well beyond the range of any except the world's largest telescopes. The discovery was made at Palomar by Drs. Danielson and David Jewett. And um, I'm delighted to say that David Jewett is now on the line to give us the latest news. Hello, David. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you well. Well, first of all, many, many congratulations upon having discovered this comet. How long have you been searching? Uh, we've made about, uh, about four searches from Palomar, uh, spread over the last uh, two years. And you were, in fact, using the 200-inch reflector with a CCD? Uh, yes, yes. We placed the, the CCD, a charge-coupled device, at the uh, prime focus uh, to obtain the maximum sensitivity possible. Were you surprised to find the comet as early as this? Um, we really were quite uncertain about the magnitude of the comet. Uh, we started searching two years ago because we believed the magnitude uh, could have been uh, sufficient for us to see it two years ago. So we think it's about time that it's been, uh, it's been found. We found it. Well, two very important questions. First of all, uh, you knew more or less the position where it was going to be. How accurate yes. were, the, were, were the predictions? Well, the measurements are still very preliminary, but uh, we make it that the comet is uh, just eight arc seconds uh, west of the predicted position. And that corresponds to the comet being uh, 0.4 of a day late in its orbit. Well, after a total absence of well over 70 years, that is pretty good going. And perhaps even more important, what about the magnitude? I gather that's now between 24 and 25, which makes it one of the faintest objects ever observed. Uh, we think the magnitude is, uh, is 24.3, plus or minus 0.2. Now, is, uh, does, that agree with, does that agree with the predicted magnitude, or is the comet too bright or too faint? Well, the predicted magnitude was very uncertain, and different people predicted uh, different magnitudes. Uh, we are in a, in a believable range. It suggests that the, the cross-section of the comet is on the order of uh, a few square kilometers. It's very small. What exactly does it look like when you, uh, when you see your results at the moment? A very faint smudge? It uh, looks like a little tiny star. And the only thing which really distinguishes it from being a star is that it moves in the correct direction uh, at the correct speed. How many observations of it? When, when the stars stay fixed. How many observations of it have you made up to now? Uh, we have seven separate frames uh, on which the motion is observed. So and now, in fact... Another frame taken on a different night uh, which shows that the comet has indeed moved uh, far away from its previous position. So you do have enough observations now to work out exactly how it's going to move over the next months? Uh, yes, that's correct. Yes, It's very close to the ephemeris, and we plan to use the ephemeris uh, to, to plan future observations. Well, coming down to <laughs> human feelings, you must have been pretty excited when you first realized that you had got Halley's Comet. Uh, yep. <laughs> we were very pleased, extremely pleased. Well, many congratulations, David. Thank you very much indeed, and thank you for giving us the latest news. Goodbye for now, and many thanks. Okay, thank you. Goodbye. Bye. So there we are. Halley's Comet has come back into our ken. Of course, at the present moment, as David said, it hasn't got a tail, and it's way out beyond the orbit of Saturn. But it's coming in now, it'll approach the orbit of Jupiter, and it will actually pass perihelion, and that's its closest point to the Sun, in February 1986. And by that time, it will have developed a tail. And remember that comet tails always point more or less away from the sun. So as the comet comes into the sun, it moves head first. And as it, after it's past perihelion and starts moving outwards again, it travels tail first. But comets, you know, are very strange things. They are not massive bodies in the way that planets are. They are made up essentially of particles, mainly ices, together with very thin gas and dust. 
and those ices naturally evaporate as the comet comes in as toward the sun. The tail develops, and so does the coma or head, and this masks the nucleus of the comet completely. And so we know very little about cometary nuclei, we have never really seen one. And that is where Halley's Comet is going to be able to help us, because it is the only bright comet that we can predict. All the other great comets have periods of hundreds or thousands of years. And Halley has been an old friend. It's been seen every seven to six years or so, ever since well before the time of Christ. The period is not exactly seven to six years. It varies a bit from one revolution to another, but nevertheless, seven to six years is an average. And it was, in fact, seen uh, in 1066, just before the Battle of Hastings. And it's recorded there on the Bay uh, Tapestry, which some people say was woven either by or for a Matilda, William the Conqueror's wife. And that appears to have struck alarm into the hearts of the Saxons. Uh, at a later return, the current Pope even preached against it as an agent of the devil. The last return was that of 1910, when the comet made a pretty brave showing. Mind you, there have been plenty of brighter comets, and a really great comet, with its tail stretching across the sky, must be a magnificent sight, although they've been very much short supplied lately. And, uh, of course, they have periods so long that we can't predict them, and they always take us by surprise. And that is why Halley's Comet is so important. And at this coming return, there are going to be several rocket probes launched towards it. There is, in particular, the so-called Giotto probe, and that's going to be launched by the European Space Agency, by the Ariane rocket. Then there are also two Russian probes, the Vegas, which will go there by way of the planet Venus, actually dropping uh, probes and balloons into Venus's atmosphere as they pass by. And there's also one Japanese probe, planet A. And the idea is to penetrate the coma and get our first really good close-range views of the nucleus. We can't really expect any of those probes to survive, because as they go into the heart of the comet, I think it's a fair certainty that they will be struck by a particle which is big enough to destroy them, but by that time, they should have sent us back invaluable information. And also, by that time too, the space telescope should be in orbit, a 94-inch reflector going around the Earth above the top of the atmosphere, and that too will be used for studies of Halley's Comet. So altogether, the prospect is now highly exciting. But when are you going to see Halley's Comet? Well, the answer, I'm afraid, is not yet. Remember, it's still very, very faint, and it's going to take a long time to brighten up as it comes in towards the sun. I would say that by the start of 1985, it's going to come within the range of telescopes of the size used by amateurs. And then it will brighten quite rapidly as it comes in uh, and the tail develops. And by November 1985, it should be visible with a naked eye. And it will then remain a naked eye object until the spring of 1986, apart from one time when it's on the far side of the sun and is too close to the sun in the sky. The only problem for us, I'm afraid, is that when it's at its best, it's going to be rather south in the sky, so I'm afraid that the Australians and South Africans may have a better view. But you will quite definitely see Halley's Comet. It's not, I'm afraid, going to be as brilliant as it has been at some previous apparitions. It won't even be as bright as it was in 1910. But it will be there, it's going to be very important, and it's going to give us tremendous opportunities. And now it is once more in view. And so it's glad to know that Halley is on its way back. The Wanderer has returned at last. Good night. Thank <laughs> you.